Uh, hello everybody. What's up? I'm Merlin. I'm 25 years old and I've never given a talk before, so I have no idea how this is going to go. Uh, I'm Merlin, pronounced like the wizard. I'm officially a satellite software engineer. I work at a subsidiary of Utah State University and I have used Rust since mid-2016. The first Rust Belt Rust was my first conference. Uh, so I build, program, test, and operate satellites. I have nothing to do with QBOS. Uh, they do a cool stuff, but I have never used it or looked at it. Uh, I also shouldn't do two of those things, but we're a small company, and I was the only person willing to show up at midnight and do bad things. So there I was. Uh, so yeah, I work on you know satellites like this very nice piece of iridium. Uh, there are 77 iridium satellites, and they're coming out of the sky. So if you want to see flares, now is the time. Just kidding, I don't touch those. Those are expensive and my company's too small. I make CubeSats, they're in the palm of your hand. Please don't hold them. I shouldn't even do that. I definitely have, it's bad. Uh, so once upon a time, I was subcontracting for a subcontractor for NASA, uh, long story, but uh, there's NASA in there so you know it's cool. And I had some memory testing to do. So I thought there's a very important tool I have available to make sure that the weird components down in that box are working correctly. So I reached for my favorite language, Swift. Uh, so some of you might be thinking, Swift, that's a really heavy language that also runs only on Apple devices. Are you flying an iPhone? And yes, people have literally done that. I wish I was joking. God, I wish that was a joke. Uh, they're very powerful computers. They're ARM chips, they're red hard, and you can fly them. Uh, I'm kidding, of course, though. This is a Rust conference. I didn't use that Swift. I used this one. That's also not a joke, follow me on Twitter. <laughs> so I don't write Rust at work, I'm very sorry to tell you all of that. I write things like C++, Python, Ruby, and C. The bad C. Uh, I wish I didn't, but I target a very old version of an operating system called VxWorks and the compiler we have only likes C89. I wish this was a flashlight so you could see the horror that you should be feeling right now. <laughs> we use Ruby and Python for the groundwork. I'm a very talented and multifaceted individual. We don't fly those, they're very slow. So I don't write, write Rust at work, but I want to. So Rust has helped me out in a supporting uh, way for a lot of my work. So far, I've, I'm not even two years old at this company, so the fact that I've been on like four projects is kind of weird. But I wrote a kernel module in C89. Uh, it was hard. It was a networking middleware that took messages from a different computer on the same bus, r held them in the kernel, and then pretended they were 16 different device files. And that's more or less how everything in slash dev works on Linux, which is to say, badly. So I rewrote it in Rust at home on my own time, and I found, wow, I'm bad at writing C, which is a sentence everyone who compiles C should say. <laughs> so I rewrote it in Rust, and then I found all my bugs, and then I re-rewrote it in C, still 89, because good things don't happen to me. And this time, it worked very well. I also wrote a network multiplexer in Rust. So this was a thing that handled all of the data coming down from our satellites, uh, looked for a very specific type of packet, filtered that specific packet out, rebuilt the messages from it. Uh, it took about a day, it was very fast because I didn't have to do all the weird things like finding a needle in a haystack of a binary stream or uh, whatever else I use because I just searched at crates.io for binary search, I think. I don't remember the exact criterion. But I found a thing, I put it in, it worked great. Uh, if this was C, I'd have had a bad time re-implementing it myself. Uh, so that was a success. And then, this happened. So this number means a lot to people in my field, and probably nothing to you guys. This is how many CubeSats we launch from the planet that never talk. For one reason or another, the rocket kills them, they don't launch, they don't turn on. Once they're launched, we don't know, they never talked to us, we don't know why they died. Uh, but my mission, which I can't tell you what it was called or for whom it was, uh, was one of those 22%. So for the next about six to 10 months, there's a piece of aluminum about the size of a loaf of bread uh, whizzing around the earth, slowly falling into the atmosphere, and then one day it will die. 
So my network multiplexer never got off the shelf. Um, so that's what I've done so far at work. Uh, Rust has helped both of those in an auxiliary manner. And it's time to collapse. So I'm going to hurry up. Uh, Cosmonaut is a cool project that I've been working on. This is all in present tense. That's all a lie. Uh, it does this and this. And those don't exist yet. I'm still working on them. Uh, it barely exists. It's a learning project. Rust has a lot of resources that have been really, really cool for me to learn how to program in domains that I didn't know before, didn't have in school. It's required to be open source, but because I work for the military industrial complex, it is probably read only because ITAR exists and I don't like it. So in conclusion, I haven't flown Rust, sorry. It's hugely empowered to see that I have delivered and that it found all the bugs that I didn't. It made me a better programmer. And most importantly, space loves, loves, loves safety. We take that very seriously in everything we do, software, hardware, process, all of it. So my company's very psyched about where Rust is going in the future. We want to start using it. It's just we have weird targets, and not even our LLVM hits them. So we're kind of stuck. Thank you.